and what a journey it has been. Um, I've had the mm-hmm. honor of, of having some conversations with you. You know, I, I like to mm-hmm. pop in and bug you every once in a while. And I love those conversations. I do too. Mm-hmm. I do too. You know, uh, for people that don't know my story, I, I lost my mom uh, when mm-hmm. I was 16 and she had cervical cancer and she was 38, mm-hmm. which is that's a young age, especially, you know, with CJ and all that right. kind of stuff. But uh, that's a young age. Um, and so I, I always look for motherly figures, mm-hmm. you know, and so I've always appreciated our relationship and dynamic mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and plus I like that you give me checks. <laughs> so that that's... <laughs> I wish you'd give me more. But, but it's <laughs> nice when people come in when I don't, they don't have a check that I need to give them. <laughs> I know. But sometimes I'll pop my head in the, the office and mm-hmm. I'll see like you're really into it. I'm like, okay, don't bug her. <laughs> but then there's times where we'll have some beautiful yeah. conversations and just kind of share our journeys together. Mm-hmm. And it always blesses my heart. And I, I know that does for you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the past two years, because we're almost at the two year mark, mm-hmm. we're recording this in April of 2022. And the woman I see sitting in front of me right now has a lot of strength and light that you're showing, but it wasn't like that two years ago, no. right after that happened. Yeah. So what was that journey like for you having lost a son unexpectedly? You know, it's not mm-hmm. like a 90 year old grandparent or something. I mean, this is mm-hmm. completely out of left field. How does a mother, and they say that losing a child is the worst kind of pain you could possibly suffer. Mm-hmm. What was that experience like for you? It was horrendous, Mm -hmm. absolutely horrendous. Um, The pain was like a pain I've never felt before. But the first thing I kept thinking of is Doug. Mm -hmm. And I had no choice but to go through my journey, my healing journey. My first thought was, put my head under a pillow and just stay there forever. But I couldn't do that to Doug and my grandkids and to my husband. Um, I needed them to know that I love them just as much as I love CJ. I don't know why these words came out of my mouth the day CJ died, but my daughter-in-law is a therapist. And I looked up to Bonnie and I said, I'm not going to be able to do this myself. You need to find me someone and you need to find me someone fast because I'm not going to be able to pull this off by myself. So in that moment, with all the grief, with all the Mm -hmm. shock, with all the craziness that was happening, you had the wherewithal to realize like, man, I I need to, I need to connect with someone that lead me through this. Mm -hmm. I think it was the wherewithal and the love That you had for your that I have for Doug and Carl and my grandkids and Bonnie and the love of my family. Mm -hmm. Family's always been the most important thing to me, and um, that's the only thing I can think of now to where I would say those words. Um, So love got you through. Love got me through. It truly did get me through. Doug and Bonnie took care of absolutely everything, including, you know, CJ's service. We sat down as a family, including CJ's boys, and said, okay, what do you want to happen? Um, I'm not telling you it's easy by any means, because it wasn't. I didn't think I could cry anymore, and I would tell people, this is like the movie, The First 50 Dates. I don't know if you've ever saw it. It was Adam Sandler, right? And every morning he had to wake up knowing that his wife doesn't even remember who he is. And every morning I had to wake up reliving that whole scenario. But I have such an amazing support group My sister, Jeanette, who lived in Colorado, every morning she would text me saying, okay, it's another first 50 dates morning, and gave me words of strength for me to crawl out of bed. Okay, I can do this. Um, My other sister would send me like little presents every single day. Um... Bonnie had asked me the day that CJ died, who do you want me to call? And I said, you need to call my friend Karen. 
and she, my best friend, she lives in the area, and she was with me every single day for two or three weeks, giving me strength. So it's not, the strength wasn't all within me. It was around me. Susan, she would text me, you know, prayers and little sayings. And it seemed like whenever I received them, I needed it the most. Mm -hmm. It was hard, John. It is hard. It is still hard. But my main goal, understanding that I, my heart would never be whole, how do I live where I can live with a broken heart and still be able to laugh and enjoy life? And I can laugh. I can enjoy life because there's a lot to enjoy in my life. Mm -hmm. It has just been a journey getting there, and I had to do a lot of things through that journey, through my healing journey. 